Good morning and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a great pleasure always uh, to be part of these sessions, and I want to thank our loving Father who enables such wonderful platforms where we are able to discuss on certain topics together, and therefore we are able to arrive towards a spiritual conclusion. There are a lot of doctrines, there are a lot of um, uh, spiritual facts that are being described in the Bible. Only thing is, we don't open our eyes and heart and mind and read enough. Or even if we read, we, know, we do not give enough processing time. Or even if we process it, we do not apply those principles that we had learned in our day-to-day -day life. So we, had some, we have some more other shortcomings and we introduce those gaps. And that is the reason you will see that the devil is basically making an entry into your lives. And we need to close that entry. We need to be the gatekeepers, right? And we need to close that gate. And we need to open that gate to allow the Holy Spirit to come in. That is why these kind of sessions are going to be very, very helpful. A warm welcome to the short session. There we discuss on specific topic, roughly around 15-20 minutes, and then we close. Today, we have yet another topic to discuss, a very important one. It's from Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Yeah, all of you have Bible is what I believe. If you don't have Bible, write to me. You have my email ID and uh, WhatsApp number. Do not call me for any prayer request because you don't need me. You already have access to the throne room of the Father in the name of Jesus. So go to him directly. But for any request like this, I don't have a Bible. I don't have money to buy Bible. Write to me. We will gift you. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. It's, it's talking about the vanity of pleasure. What is this vanity? Vanity means waste of time, useless piece of thing. There is no point giving, paying attention to something that is a kind of a dead rubber. You know, you, you kick the red dead rubber, for example, a piece of uh, tire. What happens? You will fracture your ankle. Correct, no? Either it will harm you or there is no use. The rubber will not move. The rubber is so heavy, it is sturdy, it will not move. So situations like that, that it's not worth it to spend time on such things. And therefore what happens is, it becomes useless piece of thing or waste of time. One such parameter or attribute that all of us actually go through in our lives is explained by Solomon here. That's called as pleasure. Now, when you talk about pleasure as a subject, many of us take pleasure in various deeds or experiences, circumstances that we go through in our lives. Some of the people take pleasure only in talking. They, they have so much of pleasure and time and energy to talk. Basically, they are called as gossipers because if you are not a gossiper, you will not spend enough time in talking. You, have, you just go around and observe and see gossipers, murmurers, complainers, grumblers, slanderers, sledging people. These people now love, they are very fond of talking. Some of them could be politicians too. Without that, there is no pleasure for them and they feel their growth is basically based on what they talk. I am also good at talking, but I use it to constrict people in a constrictive way, but not in a destructive way to gossip about something bad mouthing and this and that. Some people take pleasure or in fact they, see what is pleasure means, you extract that joy, that peace, that happiness on some activity right, or some event or some of your habitual practices. What that is, what that, what that could be is what we are analyzing. Some people take pleasure um, or they get immense joy uh, when they buy new cars or they, if they don't replace or exchange the car in two, once in three years or two years, they will not be at peace. Some people take pleasure in investing money, which is good, constructive, but their heart should not be attached towards that money. Some people, always like to switch jobs. They don't stay in one place. Some people take pleasure in fighting, quarrels, um, controversies, confrontation, without which they cannot go to sleep at peace. Some people, they always like finger pointing, right? All these things, right? The variety of people, but there are a good category of people. They take pleasure in meditating the word of God. They take pleasure in reading the Bible enough. They take pleasure in talking to the Father in heaven. In the name of Jesus, they take pleasure to supplicate and pray for the needs of the world. They take pleasure to fight against the sicknesses 
probably they have ended up in some infliction due to some of their sinful deeds but they never give up some people take pleasure in being that warrior fight against and they will be an overcomers these are good categories of people that's why bible says day and night those who shall meditate in my word i'll be pleased with them father in heaven says that and they will be prosperous they are like that trees planted on the river bed you know the, when the river uh, rubs through those bushes and trees and they grow they get all the minerals all the res- necessary resources to overcome fight the battle to be prosperous to excel to 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 do uh, in everything they do will be successful bible says in psalms chapter 1 you take and read right now what where is your heart there basically lies your treasure and where your treasure is that basically lies your pleasure comes as rhyming right where your heart is there lies your treasure and where your treasure is there lies your pressure pleasure and that is where people must introspect people must investigate examine their own inward feelings and start to discover where their heart is right what are they attached towards worldly pleasures materialistic things or um, you know seasonal things you know when all is well they love god when nothing is well they hate god now what kind of attitude you get into is basically what you need to discover now solomon is giving such set of instructions as inspired by the holy spirit and what are those instructions what are those words of wisdom let us analyze together and i want to set the context that's why it took few minutes the vanity of pleasure he calls it is useless to have pleasure i won't say it is completely useless spiritual pleasures you take pleasure in reading the word i gave you a list of things right meditating talking to god encouraging people uh, motivating people sharing the good news leading them towards the path of salvation talk to them about the kingdom of heaven talk to them about the eternity and life after death second coming rapture tribulation so many things are there you want to always see people end up talking lot of people talk to me a big network of people even if we start on a general topic somehow it will lead towards the word of god i don't do it uh, wantonly but that is soaked as part of my blood my body mind heart soul everything is somehow connected to the word of god ultimately i will go in that direction with or without uh, my knowledge or knowingly or unknowingly i land up there what is solomon saying i said in my heart come now i will test you with mirth therefore enjoy pleasure but surely this also was vanity yeah mirth is a kind of a, a fragrance you know um, and or some of the costly um, fragrance even if i were to test you with mirth it is still vanity you know it's uh, costing you several thousands of dollars and i'm going to buy you one of the costliest gift you'll be happy until the gift gets grows little older right after 2 3 months the gift doesn't seem to be a gift it doesn't excite you anymore that means what that pleasure is basically you know like a passing cloud in fact the life of every human being itself is like a passing cloud bible says and uh, what is this gift right this is all after all mere materialistic things yeah well, that's why i don't get super excited when people wish me happy birthday and bless me i love it but when they give me that gift on the day oh what gift you are going to give me and all that what 24 hours the gift will die your aspiration your excitation everything will die so don't pay attention on such things which are going to pass away like a cloud that's exactly the point solomon is trying to make here right i said of i i said uh, of laughter it is madness and of mirth what does it accomplish see if you want to talk about any of the riches solomon is the best example because he had all the riches in the world and this guy tells the richest man tells it's useless I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine while guiding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly folly means foolish things till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives Solomon is a classic example who used wisdom for all sorts of worldly pleasures he married 700 wives i don't know how he got the energy to manage these many wives and plus 300 con- concubines right not wives concubines and uh, apart it is all accounted maybe there are unaccounted less of always able to manage and not all of them because belong to jewish tribe some of them are ammonites canaanites egyptians and all that the first wife he married was from egypt that itself is a violation and how can you call this guy a man of wisdom that's why he is saying i was foolish 
God made a clear commandment, right? He has written it down. Do not take people from anywhere outside the Jewish tribes, the twelve tribes. But this fellow went and got married his first wife, and he calls himself as man of wisdom. And now he had realizes everything I did was a foolish thing. Sometimes your education, your literacy, all that you have learnt in the past, your experience could drive you crazy. And he is a very good example for that. I made my works great. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. Vineyards is talk, talking about investing, right? Investing in bank and all that. Investing in agriculture, investing in farming, investing in this and that. Buying properties and you want to resell. Investing in gold, silver. If your heart is towards that, and uh, you know you you want to build house after house, now you keep on switching. You are not happy. You build a house, you sell it, and then you buy a land and you build a house and then you sell. You there are crazy people like this. And this this guy is also he built uh, the temple of God. Now, I think he took a uh, few. I don't remember exactly few years, and uh, he took double the time to build his own house, palace. Yeah, and uh, that's how he is. And I may and uh, the way how he decorated his house and how his dining table was arranged, his servants were ordained. Uh, the queen from Sheba, she was awestruck. There wasn't anyone like that. Now he says, I made myself gardens and orchards and planted all kinds of fruits, <clears throat> fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to water the glowing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house. Yes, I had great repositions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. He's talking about all the wealthy positions he had, all the wealth he had, and uh, he positioned them in such a way that the wealth wealth multiplies. And he had so many people to serve him. I also gathered myself silver and gold, and the special treasures of the kings of the provinces. I acquired male and female uh, singers, the delights of the sons of men, and musical instruments of all kinds. He is touching almost all the category below it. If you are interested in music, you might be getting all the collections, starting from Michael Jackson all the way to Lata Mangeshkar, right? Indian classic singer. All these things you might be acquiring. Now I am coming to the point. Or silver and gold. I already told you, right? It, there wasn't a single thing that he had left untouched, right? He went everywhere. He was a big entrepreneur, a businessman. He had trade with all the parts of the world. Some of his ships even came to Co Cochin, right? And there is a synagogue in Cochin where he had trade with India through that, you know, seaways. Um, and his ships used to land here with all spices. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. The wealthiest person, the wealthiest Maharaja, Sultan, you can call him. Um, also, my wisdom remained with me. Then he was known for his wisdom. Nobody could defeat him. You want to know who was the best politician? You want to know who was the best person who was wealthy? That was Solomon. And he says that is the truth. He is not simply exaggerating. He is telling the truth. And then I looked. Now something happened. So whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. Any pleasure, he just mentioned it in a short term. Maybe it could be adultery, pornography. It could be any kind of drug addictions, this and that. So if he were to give a list, no, this Bible won't be enough. So many things he tried. He never withheld anything. He wants to try. Good or bad, he wants to try it. If he hears anything, if he thinks of anything, could we try something like that? Good or bad, he will try. Can you imagine a person like him? Crazy, right? I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, <coughs> and this was my, excuse me, <coughs> this was my reward from all my labor. What is the reward? Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had toiled. All through his life, he went everywhere. It was like a big shopping spree. And indeed, all was vanity and grasping for the wind that there was no profit under the sun. Because why? This fellow realized, someday I'm going to be dead and gone. You know, the size of the stomach is only this much. Or this much, you know. How much ever you eat, you're going to fill only that much is needed. Right? And that's why many poor people, they eat only two meals a day and they're very happier than you. They're more healthier than you, actually speaking. But this guy realizes after he went through everything, in life that's why beloved at an young age please inculcate that wisdom start to realize what is necessary what is essential what will lead me towards the path of salvation therefore i will never miss that crown of life i will never miss my presence in eternity 
being with the Lord forever and ever. And I will never miss on His everlasting mercies. And this is exactly what you and I are supposed to think through. And not only think through, you and I start to change our lifestyle. Yeah, habitual practices, the mind process or thought process, everything that is running. Decisions you make should never be linked to the materialistic days. I'm not saying you should save, you shouldn't save up money, you shouldn't buy cars or property, but his heart was all about it. It's all, all about worldly pleasures, investing money, invest, buying gold, silver, and the best of his wealth, luxury, men uh, to work, men servants, and uh, all the ladies that he, whom he married. And uh, he doesn't want to go to war at all. One of the laziest king that I've ever known, right? Because anybody coming to war, he will marry that guy's daughter. Immediately, he will become his father-in-law. Father-in-law cannot fight against son-in-law, correct, no? Because his daughter will become widow. This is how he was managing peace. Can you imagine? And he calls himself as, uh, you know, a person with wisdom. Now he realizes and says, all this is vanity, what I've done. Why he calls it as vanity is, I did not secure my soul. And what Solomon died, having not repented on what God said, that he was displeased with all that he did. And he did not make a prayer for repentance. And I am, most assuredly, I am telling you that he will never be found in paradise. He would be in the place of torment, the lake, and then be thrown to the lake of fire. Why? Because the man never repents. He wrote so many things. But where is the word of prayer? Where is the forgiveness? Look at his father David. In that Bathsheba incident, he cries out. Isaiah 51 verses 10 and 11. Create in my clean heart and all that. God struck him. And punishment was settled. His accounts were settled through the punishment that God allowed in his life. And then he once again was renewed in his spirit. And he walks with God until the end of his life. Most assuredly, the person is going to be found in um, paradise. And that's why in his bloodline, Jesus was born. But uh, talk about Solomon. Nobody. Uh, you know, because of the promise of his father, David, his son was able to rule and some of his bloodline continued in that kingship. It was not because of his deeds. And that's why he says... I am totally a waste guy. You know, I have never done anything great. Today you have lessons to learn from the life of Solomon. If you are enjoying the pleasures of the world, if your heart is attached towards some of the worldly treasures, materialistic deeds, today is your chance. Please come to the Lord through repentance, reconcile with Him and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and may He guide you. Pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit. God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. Please subscribe to our channel. Please get access to all our playlists. Do not miss on any videos. These are the videos which are very, very helpful for you to grow much forward in your spiritual life. When you grow in your spiritual life, your materialistic needs are going to be automatically met. Guaranteed. Matthew 6.33 Seek the kingdom of the Lord first and His righteousness, the rest all will be added to you. Do not worry about tomorrow. I, the Lord, will take care of your needs. Jesus said that in Matthew 6. Um, and also share it with your friends, near ones, dear ones, whoever, whomever you know. Do not refrain from sharing from anyone because that is your responsibility. You've got to share the word of God. You've got to lead people towards the kingdom of heaven. You need to secure souls for God. The perishing souls will come and blame you during the white throne judgment. They never spoke to, to us about Jesus. They never taught us Bible. So you don't be in that place. right? That itself could take you to hell. So please, please be careful. Your responsibilities are important. Continue to pray for my, me and our ministries because your prayers are the ones which helps me keep going. God bless you. Take care. Manakam.